guys, it's Carissa Wu, as you know, and I'm here with a very special guest. Her name is Kate Story, and she is the co-founder of Book More Brides alongside her husband, Nick, where they help wedding business owners around the world to better understand how to identify their perfect clients, what to say to them, and how to book, and how to create strategic online content that builds relationships and sales. Welcome, Kate. Thanks, Chris. So happy to be here and talk about all this with you today. Yeah, I was like binge listening to your podcast today and it was so good and you're so good at speaking and you're so beautiful. Oh, so, so I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you. Can't <laughs> wait to talk about all this. Yeah. So I just gave you like uh, the listeners a little bit of bio about you, but you could tell everyone like who you are and who you serve and what you do. Absolutely. So with Book More Brides, um, so we're actually the second owners of the business. Um, we started out as students, um, just like many of our students now too. Um, but we have always had a passion for uh, marketing. I, that's, you know, my background is in marketing, writing, all of those things. Um, my husband has always been very interested in sales, uh, business strategy, all of those things. Uh, and the way that we actually came to become the owners of Book More Brides is, like I said, we were students. We had and we still have a uh, wedding video alternative, uh, a business that we offer uh, wedding video alternatives and uh, kind of DIY wedding video. It's really fun. But um, so we came to the original founders of Book More Brides, Stephanie and Jeff. Um, if you've been in the wedding industry for a while, then uh, you know you may have heard their names before. And uh, but we got connected with them to start talking about some of those more digital marketing topics, really making sure that um, their students were uh, you know really well versed in all of those things and teaching on those topics. And um, we came to learn that they were looking to you know move on to some different areas professionally. And so they just came to us when they were like, you know, would you be interested in kind of carrying on the torch for them? So we're like, yeah, let's do this. Wow. So, um, which is great because this has always been a community that, you know, being with other wedding pros has always been, um, and to, you know, we've loved being in this community, but to be able to combine it with our passion for marketing, for sales, for business, um, has just been really, really wonderful because we know that wedding pros are really, most wedding pros are really great at what they do, right? doesn't yeah, have anything uh -huh. to do with like how good they are or not, right? It has more to do and whether or not their business is, is as successful as they want it to be. A lot of times it comes down to having the right marketing systems in place, the right business mm -hmm. strategies. And so that's where we come in. That's what we do is we help to really teach those tactics. We have a couple of different uh, ways that we do that. Memberships, kind of DIY, learn as you go, coaching, done for you services, um, a lot of things that we offer like that because you know people are at different places in their business. Um, but really making sure that you get those fundamentals right because we know, we believe and we know, we've seen it so many times that when you get these things right, it just opens yeah. up this whole world because again, you're great at what you do. You just need more people to know about it, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, you're speaking my language because I've been doing wedding photography for about 12 years and I started my coaching business like only during pandemic. So like a year, year and a half. And what I've learned like throughout the year was to make a marketing plan. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I never had one in these 10 years. You just do all the things. Right, well, and that's the thing. It's it, You don't go into your wedding business usually because you're like super pumped about like creating a marketing plan, right? <laughs> or like business plans or anything like that. You do it because you love photography. You love what you yeah. do for your couples. So that's that's the thing is, is how do you get the information that you need to be able to handle that? Because the other side of it is you love what you do, but if you don't learn the marketing side, if you don't learn the business side, you're not going to be able to to do more of what you love, right? Yeah, that's so crazy. Um, I'll ask you, there's so many questions I could ask you, but I wanted you to touch a little bit about what is like the alternative video and how did you get started with that and how did you meet these people to buy their business? Yeah, yeah. So um, so our business that we have uh, is called Wedio. And we started that because when Nick and I got married, we were pretty young. We were 23 and 24. And, um, you know, I mean, we love at first sight, you know, met in college. And, um, you know, we would have gotten married sooner. But we're like, no, we're going to finish our degrees. We're going to you know, really try to do this. So but we, you know, as soon as we could, right? You know, so, you know, our parents helped us out with stuff. But, you know, money budgets get tight. And, you know, it's money starts going out to other areas. So we ended up not having a wedding video and it has been like the biggest regret 
from our wedding looking oh, back because oh, yeah. now we've been married for um, actually this week we'll have been married 17 years and we have wow. four kids and you know we've Whoa. had family members that have passed you know that were at our wedding but are no longer here anymore and we would love to be able to show our kids like what those people were like on our wedding day you know all of the fun oh. like all the stories that we have you know we can't share all of them I guess but <laughs> but like telling some yeah. of those stories from our wedding day it's like we can show them our wedding album, our photos, but it just it's not the same, right? It doesn't tell the same story as as being able to see the mannerisms of the people that were there and hearing, you know, the voices and and all of that. So that's why we started because we didn't want any other couples to have that same regret. And but wow. again, like like you and like so many of your listeners, you know, we started that because we had that passion and that love and that desire for couples to not regret having that. We didn't do it because we're like, oh man, I can't wait to write emails. You know, I can't wait to uh, yeah. you know get on sales conversations and like you know uh, try to work people through a you know a funnel and everything. No, we did it because we wanted to help people. But if we don't have those things in place, you don't really have a business. You have an expensive hobby, right? <laughs> so mm, that's totally. where we came to book more brides because there were uh, you know different programs that were offered and things like that. So we we joined as members uh, just to try to start learning those things on our own because you know we're just starting out. That seemed like a logical place, and um, so we did that. And like we said, we just kind of got connected through a couple of other members who knew the founders personally, and you know to said, hey, these guys are like you know, they've got a really strong background in marketing and sales. Maybe they could teach one of your monthly workshops, you know, your membership workshops. Mm. So that's how we started from there and uh, hit it off with them. And, and yeah, now here we are a couple years later, we're running the business full time and, uh, and just loving it because like I said, now we can talk with people full time about this, help them see those transformations in their business. It's just, I love it. So happy. Oh, I love it. I mean, I'm going to learn so much from you, but I just wanted to know, like, What's kind of like your niche for the book more brides? My niche is more like um, the lead magnet and getting on the vendor list and then the Zoom sales call. But do you guys have like a framework? Yeah, yeah. So we have we have a couple. Um, we have the the wedding business roadmap, just kind of an overall because a lot of what we do is we we take a kind of a holistic view of your wedding business, um, but through the lens of marketing and sales. So um, mm -hmm. what Nick is really great at is being able to sit down with our students and say, okay, like, here's where you're at. Where do you want to be? Um, you know, what are your goals for your business? Oh, okay, well, here's what you need to do to get through that. And then where I come in is saying, okay, so now we've got kind of that big picture of what, where, where you want to be, how to get there. Um, what is the on the ground stuff that we need to do now? Okay. How do we need to make sure your website is in good shape? Um, and this is where we, we talk about it's, we call it cracking the booking code. And that's oh. where you have to, when you bring in a couple, um, through whatever means that might be, you know, Google search, uh, through paid ads, anything like that, um, we're just meeting them in person referrals, all of that. Right. But when a client comes into you, they need they need a couple of things. So the first thing they need is to like what they see, that when they come in, they need to like what they see. You need to be able to keep the conversation going, make sure you, the fortune is in the follow-up, right? So making sure yeah. that you have the right systems in place to be able to continue that follow-up. And you need to be able to close them confidently. So that way, when you are on a sales call with them, you are, you know, feeling completely confident in offering your price. You're feeling confident in making sure that you are, um, you're helping them to understand what makes you different, why you're the right choice yeah. for them. So a lot of it is like kind of the groundwork that gets them to, you know, where you, the, some of the concepts and things that you teach on, um, that's kind of more our niche is working that groundwork of how to bring them in, how to make sure they like what they see, um, and then making sure that you're following up with them. So that way you can work, you know, uh, help get them through those uh, different steps to get to a sale. Okay, that's that's amazing. That sounds great. I just wanted to ask you this, these two questions because for selfish purposes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, how many photographers are you working with mm -hmm. or are working with you? And then like, how are you getting your leads? Uh, for our, our particular business? 
Yeah. 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 So there's, um, so because Bookmore Brides has been around for a while and everything, um, we have a very strong SEO presence. That is something Mm. that we do teach as well is making sure that Mm. you are, um, you have a strong SEO presence. You have a good amount of keywords, um, making sure they're the right keywords. Um, but also we are trying to make sure that we are, you know, using some of the other methods that, you know, we also talk about the fast versus the slow methods of bringing in leads, right. And fast methods are like paid ads, um, social media posts, uh, those kinds of things that are kind of bringing people in. You're getting out in front of them quickly and you're bringing them through to kind of uh, move them through the funnel. Um, but the slow way is like SEO, blogging. We have tons yeah. of blogs built up on our website and we continue to add to. Um, now with the podcast, um, we're bringing in people through that. So um, there's a lot of different ways that we're bringing people in. Um, photographers are definitely, um, I do work, we do work with a lot of photographers, but we help anybody in the wedding industry. So I don't know if I could put like a number on it because we yeah. also have a, a several different ways that we we work with people um, either through, uh-huh. like I said, you know, done for you services. Uh, like I do one-on-one copywriting uh, for clients. Um, we have an acceleration membership, which is like our monthly um, workshop. We offer monthly workshops um, and it's, it's very affordable uh, learn as you go style. And then we also have group coaching. So I would say probably oh, I w- everything is probably about 30%. Like, you know, we have photographers, yeah. venue owners, um, you know, DJs. Oh, I love it. I'm just trying to like, I'm just really inspired by you because I'm kind of more on the new side for a coach. Mm-hmm. So it just gives me chills when I see someone like just making it happen. Oh, That's so cool. You are making it happen. That's the other thing. You, you are great at what you do. Again, you are great at what you do. There's a reason why you went into this. And it's not only because you love your business, but because you love the people you work with, right? Like, so yeah, yeah. this is, you are going to rock it. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. Okay. I have to ask this question because it's a name on my mm-hmm. podcast and you can speak to like your book more brides business or just in general, but what's like your biggest sales technique? Um, how do you get that heck yes from your dream clients or how do you help your clients get that heck yes? <laughs> yes. Well, again, you know, part of it is laying that groundwork, right? We truly believe that if you set the groundwork through your marketing materials, through your website, through your emails, your social posts, all those kinds of things, the way that you are speaking to your clients, the visuals that you are putting out there, when you can clearly demonstrate why you're the right wedding pro for them, why you're the right photographer, um, why you're the right coach, even anything like that, when you can clearly demonstrate that in your words and your images, then you're going to do get like 80% of the work done so that by the time they uh, get to that sales yeah. call, they're already warmed up. They're already like, yeah, pretty sure this is the one. And yeah. all they need to know is, do you have my date available? And um, really, you know, how much, how much is it, right? Truly like, and is this the, you know, the right program? Which one is the right one for me, right? So getting that heck wow. yes involves so much of the groundwork that you have to set up beforehand and making sure you have those things in place. But then talking about the sales conversation itself, getting to that heck yes is really making sure that you are echoing back to them and saying to them what it is that you know that they really want. So talking about the photographers, for example, when you are a, you know, so as a photographer, you're working with couples who obviously want beautiful pictures of their wedding day, right? But that's so different for for every type of photographer, right? So I'll give you two examples of, of two different students that we've had um, in recent, uh, you know, in the past year for sure. Um, so one of them is a husband and wife team in Chicago. And their photography style is very artistic. It's, you know, the colors are deep and saturated and, um, you know, the angles are very unique. And their whole goal is, um, and what their, their clients really want, is they want their wedding photos to look like works of art, like it should be in a gallery somewhere, right? Oh, wow. That's, yeah. That is the type of photography that they deliver. So they need to yeah. talk about that for their clients, okay? But then- a different client that we have is uh, she's a photographer in Seattle and she is more on the light, bright, airy style of things. She does light posing. 
Um, you know, but mostly does a lot of, um, you know, she helps him to feel comfortable, you know, because these are people who don't necessarily feel real comfortable in front of the camera. So she, they just want to look their best on their wedding day. Right. So she the work that she does, not only in her her photography, but in the way that she works with the couple on their wedding day, that she guides them. Right. Helps them to feel comfortable. Those that's part of what she does now with those two very different styles in mind. Think about if this this artistic gallery style, you know, uh, st- type of photography was on the website of the light, bright, airy photographer with her pictures, too. Like you've got both of those going. It's super confusing because you're like, yeah. which one are they doing? What is it that they really do? But not only that, we're not getting to that deeper why of what it is. Not only are we confusing them with the visual images, but we're not speaking to that deeper why of what it is. So with that, that Chicago couple, they had to, we worked with them to, so they could clearly communicate like that their couples want this artistic style. We say like, you know, you're going to, you're going to have these photos that like everybody's going to see and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's you guys. That's incredible. Wow. That should be displayed somewhere. Right. Whereas what do the couples of the, the Seattle photographer, what do they want? And what furthermore, what do they want their family and friends to say? They want them to see these and say, I can't believe that's you guys. Like, look at, look at the setting. Look at, oh, you guys look just so happy and in love. Do you see how there's two different intentions? Totally different messaging. I, I hear right? you. So that's the work that we have to do is to get deeper on what it is that our couples really want and then being able to clearly describe that in the words on our website, in our sales messaging, our conversations back and forth, right? So going back to the sales conversation, that's where we started with this, right? Is Uh making sure that when you're in that conversation with them, you're going to say things like, hey, so, you know, so tell me, tell me about what you want on your wedding day. And they're going to likely say, they're going to start with the generics, right? Oh yeah, beautiful photography, you know, maybe, you know, catching some really cool moments and everything like, yeah, because, you know, how do you want, you know, how do you want people to like react when they see the pictures? And they're going to say that and you just repeat it back. Oh, yeah. So you want you want people to be like blown away by your wedding photos, right? You want them to be like totally oh, stunned. And yeah. They're like, yes. Yes, I do. And you're repeating oh. back to them. So they're like, yeah, we're on the same page, right? Oh, you're giving me chills right now. (laughs) Sales psychology. (laughs) It's it's, seriously so much of it is psychology. And it's really not that it's not difficult once you learn these techniques. Once you learn them, you're like, yeah, I can do this. Like building confidence in that. It's 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 easy to do, you just gotta practice it, right? But then the other side of it is then echoing back what they don't want. So asking them, like, Mm. okay, so what's gonna happen? How are you gonna feel if you don't get those gorgeous gallery worthy images? Like how, mm. how's that gonna make you feel? How would you they're gonna die? Right. And they're <laughs> gonna be like, yeah, oh my gosh, it's like this is gonna be the worst thing ever because this is our one day. We can never do this again. We're gonna every time we see those pictures on our wall, we're gonna feel disappointed. Like it's just we're not even gonna want to put them up, right? Like yeah. you say things like that, and you're like, yeah, I mean. Who who would want that? Why would you, you know, why would you spend all this money on this the biggest day of your life and not get something that you're gonna be proud to put on your walls, right? And say, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So it's getting them to basically it's it's echoing back what they're saying, but also helping them to see what is what they're gonna gain by working with you, but also what's at stake if they don't. Oh, I love and that. Once they know this, once you're you're kind uh-huh. of saying this and everything like that it is so much easier for them to say heck yes to you because now they're yes. like, they got me. Oh heck my no. gosh, they got me. Yes. How? <laughs> Take my money, right? Like it's like, <laughs> oh, it's, I it love just that. makes the whole process so much easier. I think I was teaching that too, but you went kind of more deeper with it. I always ask the question like, have you been in like weddings before? Yeah. You know, most people have and what have you like liked or disliked about the wedding photographer? But I think thinking of like, what would happen if you don't have these? And, you know, as me and you were veterans, so we know yeah. so many people have been very upset about their wedding photos so um, to the point where they can't even look at the gallery. They said, oh, they looked at it for like two seconds and then they're just like, I won't even check it again. Isn't that, and I mean, so, how sad is that? So that's, that's what yeah, we have your biggest to help day. them understand this. And, and furthermore, and then to demonstrate some like, you don't have to worry about that with me. I'm not going to let you down like that. 
Yeah. Okay. That's so good. Okay. So Kate, you should have your own talk show. I mean, you have your own podcast, but maybe like, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) you could probably talk for days because you're so knowledgeable and articulate, but we have to get into our hot topic. So tell me your hot topic and why you chose it. Yes. So what I really want to talk about is the difference between buy now and buy later couples. And I really, oh my gosh, you guys, if you can take this to heart and learn about this and apply it into your business, I know you're going to see huge results. So most of the time we as wedding professionals focus on the buy now couples. And what I mean by that are couples who are, they know they need wedding photography, They've kind of put it off a little too long or, you know, whatever reason. So that way, when they learn about you, basically they, they go on your website, they're super excited. They reach out for a consultation. You have your call and they're like, yep, sounds good. Um, send me over the contract and let's do this. Right. Those are the buy now clients. But here's the thing that amount of clients is really only about 3% of your local market. It wow. is so small. And if you are only focused on that tiny little percentage of your market and don't do anything to serve the rest of your market, which I'll get to in a minute, you Uh are losing out on so much business. And secondly, you're going to end up as a business owner, you're going to end up frustrated because you're like, why isn't my business growing? Why am I struggling to get clients every month? Why am I not able to meet my bills? Like all these kinds of things, these frustrations that we come into as business owners when our business isn't operating the way that we need it to. So what's the solution? The buy later market. Um, So I I also just want to kind of set this. It's always so important to say that you're never going to have 100% of your local market. Because uh-huh. you don't have like everybody around you isn't getting married right now, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. And um, we're like not in our like twenties. Like, I mean, you look really young, but you have four kids. Yeah, yeah, so no, yeah. Not, not that young, <laughs> not at all. But um, but that's the thing. It's it's you. You're never going to have 100 percent of your market. So that's the first thing that's important to understand. Because that's you know, again, we can beat ourselves up as wedding pros. Is like. Oh, why are I getting more leads? Well, remember, you're not going to have everybody in your town. They're not all going to be interested in what you have to offer. So what we have to do is we have to absolutely have things in place through calls to action buttons on our website to be able to serve those buy now couples when they come our way, because they will still come your way, just a very small amount. But you also need to have a follow-up sequence in place. And I am a huge, huge advocate for email because we don't own Instagram, right? We don't own the algorithm. Yeah, we totally. don't have you know Pinterest, anything like that. We do not. It went down for that day, and we all freaked out. Right? Seriously, <laughs> that was like the biggest example of like why, how we don't own these things, or they could just they could change the game on us in terms of how they run, who they're getting in front of. Facebook was a great example of this. But um, yes. But basically, so we need to have a way to be able to stay in touch with our couples because. One of the biggest things people we hear from our, our students is um, I'm getting ghosted all the time, right? I'm getting ghosted by my clients. These people reach out to me. They're super excited, but then I don't hear from them again. Well, really, if you don't have a follow-up sequence in place for those buy leader couples, which those are buy leader couples, most more likely than not, you are actually ghosting them, not the other way around. Oh, that gave me, that's a mic drop moment. Right? Ah! Again, we have to go from their perspective. If a couple gets engaged and they they really they're super excited and they reach out to you because they just want to gather all their information, but their wedding's not for like another year, year and a half, two oh, years. Uh-huh, okay, uh-huh. they're not looking to like spend all their money on every single vendor right away. They're going to go in order. They're going to, you know, put down their deposit on their on their venue first, right? They're going to do this, they're going to uh-huh. do that. We need to be there for them when they are ready to to book us and when they're ready to make that decision on a photographer but we can't do that if we don't stay in touch with them okay so one follow-up question so how many emails the nurture sequence and what are you saying and like kind of the time frame do you send it like every month a week or three-day sequence so what i always advocate for and what we have found to be the most successful for our students is for them to send once a week emails once a week 
you follow a method that we we prescribe called the going give give ask the give give ask method that means that you're giving okay. twice as much information um, helpful information without asking for them to call you or look at your packages and pricing or anything that's going to benefit you this is all about them giving them useful information that is helping them to make a decision about your business about hiring you know a photographer um, or whatever your business may be okay you need to give them information that's going to help them make those decisions, but then not forgetting to ask them for the sale. Because we find that a lot of times people will go one or the other. Like they're like, oh, yeah. give all the time and never ask for a sale. Yeah, or yeah, they're yeah. like constant ask, ask, like get on a call, get on a call, check out my packages and pricing, you know, do this, you know, it's, and then uh -huh. it becomes, because what we're fighting against also is the like bad actors in like sales conversations where basically they, um, are, we've all been burned at some point, right. By like a sleazy salesperson, which we're all afraid of being. And let me just yeah. reassure all of you that you, if you're worried about being sleazy, a sleazy salesperson, you're not. Okay. <laughs> like if you're worried about it, you're not, it means you're actually thinking about it and you're not being yeah. sleazy. <laughs> right. But so the thing is though, we're all afraid of like asking and being rejected. Right. But if we don't ask, we can't move them towards a sale. But the problem, like I said, the problem is a lot of times we will give them information and then we'll ask for a sale. And if we don't keep going until they do one of three things, which I'll talk about in a minute, if we don't keep going, then we end up ghosting them and we don't have the opportunity to turn them into those buy now clients. So one more follow up yeah. question, just real fast. Um, so this nurture email sequence, is it when they just email you or do you have like some sort of lead magnet to get them in the funnel or there's multiple ways? Super helpful to have a lead magnet. Honestly, this okay. is, I mean, that is the best way to get people into your email I teach the sequence. Same thing, yeah. Yeah. Because like, first of all, I, I, I think all of your listeners probably are like young enough that they, they don't really do this, but like signing up for my newsletter, it's like, that's not enough of a value add. Like, why yeah, are they going to totally. do that? You know? They need yeah. to have something like it's it's a it's an exchange of of value, right? Their email address is valuable to them because they don't want to be dealing with pointless emails that are not going to help them out, right? And you, so uh -huh. you are giving them value by giving them a download piece. So huge fan of that. Yes. Okay. okay. So then okay. I'm um so that was I'm a, I'm a little structured in this podcast, and I really want to get to know you. At the I'm end. sorry. Yes. Um. Oh no. So I just want to say like so. Tip number one was. Nurturing, nurturing them. them. Yep. And so, then let's do two more tips, but a little bit faster. And then I want to get into like more about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So tip number two is make sure that you keep going even after you, you keep going until one of three things happens until they tell you that they're no longer interested. Um, they've gone like they've gone with somebody else um, uh -huh. to that. They're like already married or, you know, something. There's some reason like, oh, no, we're, we're not interested. Take me off your list Two, um, I'm already booked. I've got, you know, got somebody for this or three. They say, yes, let's have a conversation until then you keep keep going. And then, um, yes. so that's, that's the second one. The third one is making sure that you go long enough in these conversations. So I don't want to freak oh. anybody out, but the ideal amount of emails to, to have set up because you do this once and you're set, you're good. 26 to 52 emails. Holy shit. All right. Dude. Okay. I don't, I don't want to scare you. I don't want to scare your listeners, but if you do this, that means that you'll be able to send 26 emails as you know, weekly okay. content every six months. Right. So okay. yeah, this is where it's really helpful to know like what your lead time is, right? Like in terms of between when people will reach out for information and when they actually book. Right. So either weekly content for six months, weekly, uh, 52 weeks, you know, in a year or so, 50, weekly content for a year for those longer lead times, right? Um, or you can do every other week if that's, you know, something that you feel, if you feel nervous about emailing every week, which you don't have to be, it's okay to email every week, but that way you could also stretch it out too. So, but again, once you put in the time and you do this, then it's done. And now you've got this working behind the scenes, moving yeah. people down the sales funnel and getting that, helping them get to know about you, why you're amazing at what you do, why you're going to be the right choice for them while you're at the same time serving those buy now couples that are coming to you. I mean, your business is going to absolutely grow. So do you have like for your course or your coaching or um, I know you offer a lot of services, but do you have like done for you or like templates for these emails? Yeah. So we um, we don't 
that's something that I'm putting together. Like I'm always looking yeah. for new opportunities to have like download pieces and everything like that. Cause I didn't yeah, know yeah, how yeah. valuable it is. Um, we actually are, our, our most popular download piece is the price shoppers guide. And that is how we offer tips. And we actually do have um, some email templates in there uh, to help you uh, when couples reach out to you and their only question is how much, okay, well, how do you deal with that? How do you get them into a sales conversation how do you respond to that? We've got a template uh, on that and some tips on that. And that's at our website, bookmorebrides.com. Cool. So do you like Flowdesk or do you like MailChimp or what's like your Yeah. So email? so for ourselves, just because we have um, a large, uh, you know, we have a large email list, you know, that we've been building over time, um, you know, from the past 10 plus years that the business has been around, um, we do use a kind of like a higher octane one. It's called Entreport. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that allows us to do a lot of other things that, that we do, which I don't, we don't really recommend that for smaller businesses. Cause it's just, it's, it's a beast. It's like having Salesforce or something. It's like big, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? but, um, and we actually, we have had several of our students that have been looking for some sort of a CRM, you know, with text messaging capabilities and everything. We actually created our own. <laughs> we actually have a book. Wow. CRM, so, uh, so yeah, so that, cause we knew that this is something and we do have template emails that are built into that already to be able to reach out that you could just customize, um, text messaging templates, all that kind of stuff to make it easy. Okay. I'm going to recap a little bit so you can help me out here. So number one tip is the nurturing email. Mm -hmm. So nurture, nurture, nurture. And then the tip number two kind of goes in with tip number one, which was like, keep, keep going. going. So Don't like, give up. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't give up every week. You're in their faces yes. in, a, in a good yes, way, in a right. very, very valuable Reminding way. Reminding them. Uh, give, give, ask. Yeah. And then tip number three was- Take the time, um, when 26 to, to 52 weeks of email. Okay. Dude, I mean, I am teaching the same thing. But not um, – I do have the done for you lead magnet with like the three email sequences. Yes. But yeah, I need to keep going with it because you don't want them to forget you. Right. I know. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is because they're – we are fighting against so much information that they have available to them, especially when they first get engaged. It's like – everybody that they've ever known is like giving them suggestions. Oh, you should go with my photographer. You should get married at my venue. Like they're bombarded with information. So we need to keep it clear, keep it simple, right? Just like you were saying before. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and really making sure that we are standing out this way by really understanding that why and, and staying in front of them. That's so good. Okay. So one more question before we go into rapid fire questions and learn more about you, but what are your favorite lead magnets for photographers or even wedding professionals? Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you mean for them to be able to give out to their clients, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. City specific, location specific. Oh. Okay. Ah! And that okay, I didn't know that. from Chicago that I mentioned earlier, okay, they were they were brand new in their business. They had only you know booked a handful of weddings when they came to us, and they had big goals for their business. They wanted to both step away. They were both full time employees. Wanted to step away so they could have more flexibility to be with their kids and to work together. Um, they're both so gifted; like their work is just absolutely gorgeous. And um, so we worked with them to create a lead magnet about I think it was like um, like five or ten. I can't remember the exact number. Um, uh, engagement uh, locations in the Chicagoland area. Okay. Wow, and it's like, so it was like good. their email list like exploded because they were so good <gasps> oh about my God. I'm going to do that for Palace Seriously, 30s. You should do it. It's so good because the thing is you can get anything like, oh, how do, um, you know, outfit selection for, for your engagement photos or something like that. It's like good, good tips, good information, but you can get that from anywhere. They're going to, yeah, if yeah. you can get hyper specific and it, you know, it doesn't always have to be location based. That's a great one to start with, but even more uh -huh. specific on what you do, like how to, um, you know, thinking about that light, bright and airy one, like how to, um, how to do your makeup for the most natural looking, uh, wedding photos, you know, something like that where it's yeah. like really speaking specifically to that, that couple yeah. of what they want. Right. I mean, I'm a mom too, so up to, so I don't want to be really driving to Temecula or Malibu. Yeah. Like, where, where do you live again? I, uh, we're in Metro Detroit. Michigan. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions to get to know you better, but let's see. First question, what is something that's kind of about you that we don't know or like people on social media don't know about you? Something kind of fun or funny or quirky? <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Uh, 
Yeah, I know. It's like it's like, how much do you share? No. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, um, I I um I love rap and R and B. Oh, and I bet you have a rap. I'm, right. I'm, a, I'm a '90s girl. I I grew up in the '90s, so yeah, love love that kind of music. And it's like I have to um you know watch because like I said, I've got four little kids. Can't always be um blasting Dre like in the background. Oh so my, yeah, so that's yeah. that's my guilty pleasure after the kids go to bed is to um to listen to a little bit of my old school '90s rap and R&B. Oh uh, yeah, when I'm at a wedding and it's all '90s hip hop, I'm just like shoo shoo bed. Yes, like, exactly. <laughs> yes, you gotta you gotta. You gotta get back in touch with your like your pre mom self. So, <laughs> oh, totally. I love that. Okay, this is definitely not a parenting podcast, but I still want to know. <laughs> but what is your biggest parenting tip for me as a mom of four? Um, be willing to demonstrate uh, forgiveness to your kids. So, like, if you if like if your kids are struggling to, uh, you know, to get something right or whatever, or like, and you, like, I find I have a, we have teenagers through a four-year-old and, you know, teenager is full of hormones and everything. And so being able to come to her, like when she, she snips at me, it's like, I want her to come to me and say like, Hey mom, I'm sorry that I talked that way. And, but I need to demonstrate that too. So there are times when I lose my patience with her or I lose my patience with my four-year-old or something like that. And it's like to be able to come Uh and say, Hey, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I should have, I should have said that in a nicer way. I'm really sorry about that. Just being able to demonstrate for them how to do that. um, So that way they feel comfortable coming to you and saying that, you know, and, and showing them that, Hey, we're all human and we all make mistakes and, um, and we all still love each other at the end of the day. Oh, I love that. Did you say like before we started recording, like you were going to WNBA? Are you speaking? Oh, uh, we're not going to be speaking this year, hopefully in the future, but this year we're just going to be exhibiting, but we will have a booth there. So yeah, I would love to see anybody. Oh, oh, that's so yeah. cool. Where do you see your business? I usually say three months, mm-hmm. but maybe like three months to six months. Yeah. Three to six months, um, I definitely see us um, getting out there more. We are working to grow our podcast, our YouTube channel, um, because those are just some ways that, you know, when the business was first started, you know, they were actually, they were way ahead of their time in terms of like SEO and things like that. But um, now with the digital side and everything like that, so definitely having a stronger presence and um, and being able to uh, to reach more people online uh, through some of these, these newer means. So, and I got it, man. I got to get better at Instagram. I love Instagram so much, but it's like, I get so busy with it. So like, so yes, being more consistent on Instagram. That's where I see myself in three to six months. That's another one. Uh, I love that. So for me, like I am doing all the things, but where do you think I should focus my time on like Instagram, my lead magnets, Mm -hmm. like email marketing, um, podcasts? Like what do you think is the most important for, for me to get leads for a my coaching business. Yeah. I mean, honestly, email list, hundred percent having that strong, but I mean, we are seeing huge, uh, like kind of benefits and returns from podcasting, honestly. Um, interesting. Cause it's like, it's so much more personal than even like with Instagram. It's like, you know, yeah, you can do some, some lives and, you know, even like reels or anything like that, but it's like, you get a chance to really have real conversations and it doesn't feel so, um, uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of I get a lot of pressure from like YouTube stuff. It's like, you know, because there's, you know, different yeah. angles because it has to be visually interesting too. you know, whereas mm-hmm. with, with podcasting, mm-hmm. you can kind of just focus on the person's voice and like connecting with them. So I absolutely. Yeah, I'm definitely an audio learner. How do you how do you advertise your podcast? I, I don't know how at all. Yeah, well, it's newer. So we um so we're, you know, we're we're still uh kind of getting the word out about it, but um definitely email list. Um we share it on Instagram. Okay. Um we have a couple of like groups on Facebook and things like that. So we will share that on a regular basis too, just kind of helping to um you know, get, let people know about it. And plus with the different topics, it's not always like, Hey, did you know we have a podcast? It's like, you know, talking about whatever topic you were, you know, discussing in that episode, you know, and pull out like a nugget, just like to get people excited and be like, yeah, yeah, I I know. I saw that you did that. I I really love it. Um, and I would love to be on your podcast too. Yes, um, for sure. Yeah. Oh, no, I am going to be yes, on yes. it. I, I just scheduled oh, it. Excellent. <laughs> I See, we have a, someone who helps us with it. So yay. I can't wait. Excellent. Yeah, Alyssa. So can you ask me a question? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So what do you find is the biggest struggle 
that uh, what do you find is the biggest struggle that photographers are having right now post pandemic? Oh, you know, I have a lot of people call me um, and they say, oh, everyone's posting like this wedding boom and, you know, I'm booked out, booked out, but what's going on with me? So I just have to help them like get the lead. So they're like, they're not hearing, uh, their their phone's not ringing, like they're not getting the inquiries, they're not mm-hmm. getting the DM. So, and their, their work is, you know, pretty good. So Are they finding that it's, um, it's not like methods they had before aren't working anymore for them? Is that what you're hearing most? Or? Yeah, I think they just want to book more. Yeah. I mean, book more brides. Right? <laughs> I'll have them reach out to you. <laughs> um, but yeah, just the just the inquiries mm-hmm. and people don't really – I mean, I think the newer people don't like to get on the phone with um, clients, mm-hmm. but – I'm all about, you know, the sales call and asking for the sale yeah, and like, the well, pain okay. points and blah, blah, well, blah. Well, I know you do with the Zoom, the, you know, Zoom call and, and you know, a Zoom sales call and everything like that. What do you think, what is like uh, something that people don't do enough of in a Zoom sales call? I think they don't ask powerful questions. Mm-hmm. I get really mm-hmm. deep with them. I think I learned this on like Kardashians. It was like Scott Disick, they had like some artists come like draw them naked or I forget what it was, awesome. but he was like, what are, what do you love most about each other? And then it sounds kind of awkward. Like when, when you say it at first, but then I've been saying it for a long time and it's kind of a fun question and people like cry and like, you know, you break down walls and mm-hmm. I just ask like genuine questions because, you know, I'm really there to get to know them. Like, this is no joke. Like we're, we're in this industry because we're like hopeless romantics and that's why we, you know, we stayed in the business. So yeah. it's like that creating that connection, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, and I help people like get out of their fear because you, you could get all the free stuff on the podcast, but then when you're not working like, you know, one-on-one or group coaching, like yeah. you're, you maybe not take like the next steps to actually do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what do you find are like some of the, like the basic like action steps like that people need to like kind of get really good at like foundationally, like, you know, when I was talking about like the, you know, they need to like what they see, they need to follow up, you know, all those kinds of things. What do you find people need to do to like improve their sales process? I think I have like this whole framework, but I think you need to show like an album, your favorite album, ask the right questions, like see, have them see themselves in like your wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also, you know, tell them their why and, you know, why you're doing this and a little bit about like um, some compliments you got from like, you know, the mom or past couple Mm -hmm. or like kind of how you stand out. Like, you know, sometimes I compare myself to other photographers Mm -hmm. and um, I don't like talk crap about anyone, but I'm like, you know, I've seen this and, you know, I'm not like that. So stuff like that, like differentiators and stuff. hundred percent. Yeah. I think, I think especially like I've, I have one particular instance where like I was in a wedding and it was like the, it's knowing, it's knowing whether or not like your style is going to work for this couple and why, like being able to communicate that. Like, I, like I said, I was in this wedding yeah. and um, the photographer was so abrasive and it was like, she was, she was barking orders. She was swearing at like wedding party members and everything. And I'm going, who is this girl? But then I realized, yeah. well, so my, my friend, the bride had hired her because she is like the sweetest, nicest person and she uh-huh. would not have felt comfortable like making everybody get over here. Like she didn't, and she didn't want to be like that on her wedding day. She wanted to just, yeah. have the, you know, and know that people are getting where they needed to and everything. So I thought that was very wise. Like my friend, I, I don't know if the photographer, you know, told her this or like kind of sold her on this, but I thought it was very wise that my friend knew to have someone who could fill in where she couldn't. Drill sergeant here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, cause I'm like, geez, I would never hire someone like that. Cause it's like, I don't want somebody's talking to my fa- my, uh, you know, family members or my friends that way. But the thing is, she needed that so that they could keep them in line. So, yeah, I think that's yeah. uh, that's so funny. Okay, so this is such a great conversation. We could talk for days, but tell everyone like where to find you if you have any freebie or like how to work with you, and then any like lasting advice to wedding photographers yeah. slash professionals. Yeah, absolutely. Bookmorebrides.com. Um, you can find us on Instagram under the same name, Bookmore Brides. Um, reach out to us, hello at bookmorebrides.com. So we practice what we preach about that email, right? Um, but also, uh, so in terms of your wedding business, just have confidence that you are amazing at what you do, that you just need more people to know about it and why you are worth every single penny. Do not let yourself get 
sucked into a price bidding war, uh, you know, having to lower your prices. That's what our, our whole freebie on our, our website or download the price shoppers guide is going to help oh, you so much cool. with that. So oh. yeah, don't let yourself get talked into lowering your prices because you're worried you're not good enough. You are amazing and you should know it. you're worth every penny. Oh, I love that. That's going to be my little audiogram. Um, cool, cool. That's the greatest lasting advice ever. But thank you so much, um, Kate. I'm going to have you stop recording, but stick around and we'll chat yeah, some yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, perfect.